I'm Ashley and today we're here to talk about Powder Puff. For those who do not know what Powder Puff is, it's basically a girls playing flag football and guys coach slash cheerlead for them. If you guys will still like to sign up, it's an AC 102. We're primarily looking for freshmen and sophomore girls, but if you're a junior and senior, you can still sign up, but we really want and need freshmen and sophomore girls and we want this to happen this year. So let's go Highlander, sign up! As you may know, February is Black History Month, and this gives us a chance to celebrate the accomplishments and history of African-American culture. So we brought in Mr. Child to our studio for an interview on why he believes Black History Month is important. Enjoy. Why do you think Black History Month is important? America comes from a dark past. I mean, a lot of times it's uh, not really spoken of. But we do know that the, through the slave trade, we do know through the acquiring of slaves, that black people were mistreated for a lot of years throughout the, throughout this nation's history. So throughout the civil rights movement and everything else that transpired in order for black people to have equity and have opportunities that everyone else has afforded, this is a time for us to acknowledge those people that came before us. You know, our great civil rights leaders as well as other influential uh, black Americans that made this as a time to remember. It's an honor, it's an honorarium tool. All right, what does it represent to you? For me, it represents our history. I mean, if you want to know where you're going, you got to know where you come from. So for me, it's a, it's a clear directive of this is the direction we need to be taking. We should never be taking any steps back, but we should just be pushing forward. So it's a time for us to look back, to reflect on where we came from, where, where we've been, so that we can really plan as a people, unified, to see where we're going next. Yeah. One thing that African-Americans have faced in, historically in this country is discrimination. Have you ever experienced discrimination? Well, Absolutely. Discrimination is way more prevalent than a lot of people want to acknowledge. I mean, being right here in the Central Valley, you face discrimination. There are still places that you can go, different cities, different uh, city lines that you cross, and you know right away you are going to have discrimination. Right in the workplace, you can have discrimination. Whether discrimination is through uh, stereotypes, whether it's through just racial bias, whether it's through just uh, upbringing, discrimination is very present. I have faced it. You know, there's still things that I face today that I do understand that, you know, being black and being a black man at that, that there is going to be discrimination and there is a perception that people carry about me. Discrimination, if I'm walking down the street and I see someone that is not black walking down, that, you know, they're going to be a little more keen to keep their eye on me, if not cross the street. You know, just because there is a certain persona, there's a certain knowledge that they believe that a black male may carry and come and may present. So discrimination, yeah, absolutely, I face it. So, yeah. So you said you faced it, right? Mm -hmm. So how did you overcome it? You got. I got to keep myself. I got to keep maintaining my own values. Whenever someone's going to discriminate against you, you have to understand that they that they're discriminated against you based on what they think they know about you. So the worst thing you could do is play into what they think they know. I can only control myself. I can't control the beliefs, the thoughts, or the actions of others. But what I can control is how I respond to it. I don't have to give them what they're looking for. I don't have to give them that angry black man. I don't have to give them, you know, that thug, that gangster. But if I just be myself, maintain my own morals, my values, and what I've been, my own upbringing that my parents have raised me on, that's the way to overcome it. Okay. For those who want to fight discrimination, what words of advice would you give them? Uh, the same thing I go by. Be yourself. Like I said, arm yourself with knowledge. If you arm yourself with knowledge, that's something that nobody can ever take away. So don't give them what they're looking for. You know, black people are known by a lot of things. We're known for a lot of things. And oftentimes what they're known for is the negative things. You know, we're known by the rap videos that have been made. It looks like we're all trying to chase yeah. that money, chase women, chase drugs, <laughs> chase everything, just material things. So when you have something like that, the best thing you could do is you can overcome that by being who you are. There's nothing wrong with having uh, goals in life. There's nothing wrong with having, you know, that you want to be better, that you want to acquire nice things. But what you do is you continue to be yourself. Being yourself, knowing that somebody else is trying to make you into something else, that's the best way to fight discrimination. Okay. What African-American leader inspires you the most? Oh, Muhammad Ali, greatest of all time. Cassius Clay, yeah. <laughs> he's the man. Because what a lot of people don't understand, when you look at uh, Muhammad Ali, he was actually somebody that had, based on what other people seen, he had everything to lose and nothing to gain. 
this was the cha- this was the heavyweight champion of the world. He decided that he was not going to make uh, the nations fight his own. He told him he don't have no issues with uh, with what was happening in the Vietnam War. That was not his fight, especially realizing that black people were being mistreated. Black people were not being treated at, uh, was not being treated with equal opportunities. They were not being treated as equals. So he was like, why are you going to why am I going to go over here to fight a war that is not my own, where my own country is not supporting me and doing what, I, what, what needs to be happening for their for its own people and citizens? So Muhammad Ali, by far, it's not even about to me what he did as a heavyweight champion. But what the heavyweight championship did is it provided him an opportunity and a platform for him to fight the greater fight, which was about equality. Okay. Um, Muhammad Ali is your African American leader that you look up to the most. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir. So why does he inspire you? Well, he inspired me because of that. He was brave enough and bold enough to say, you know what, I will sacrifice everything. I'm going to sacrifice the championship belt. I'm going to sacrifice the fame that it has brought me. I'm going to sacrifice the money that it has brought me. And I'm going to do all this for not just myself and my own family, but for the generations to come. That's why he inspired me, because he was he wasn't a selfish man. He was a man that realized that this nation was not living up to its potential based on how it's treating its own citizens. So, and everything I do is not about me. It's about helping the next generation, helping the next man out. So, yeah, it's something that he definitely inspired me by. Yeah. Okay. If you could fix one thing within the African-American community itself, what would it be? How we treat each other. We talk so much about equality. We talk so much about being treated as equals. But the number one killer of black men is still black men. Regardless of what we see on TV, regardless of what we see authorities doing, Black men are still the number one killer of other black men. Families being divided. How often do you see a mother and father still in the home of a black family? So what I would fix first is our own people, how we treat each other, bonding together, the generational gap between my generation to yours. And I'm not much older than you, but I'm going to tell you that the older generation, our elders, they was raised on respect. We was raised saying, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. You know that's how we get down. Yeah. We was raised like that. But there is now a generational gap between that generation to this younger African-American or black generation coming up now. That's why when I see a young black male or female doing something that I know that they know better than, I'm like, I know how you was raised. I know where your mom and dad, grandma, grandma, uh, grandfather, great-grandmother, great-grandfather, I know the foundations they laid. We don't stand for that. You know, I, I hear things about, oh, don't call me that. Don't use that word. But we use that word more than anyone else. Yeah, true. So the first thing that has to be fixed is our love for one another, that respect for one another. You know, we got to stop hating on each other. You know, it's okay to watch your black brother, your black sister excel. And then when you do excel, reach out and pull the next person up with you. So before we go and try to fix other races and how other races entreat us, we got to fix how we can treat one another. Thank you. We appreciate having you. No problem. Thank you. I wrap up the interview. All right. Oh boy, it's that time of the year again where teachers lecture and give out work while students, well, they don't really pay attention or care. Teachers, your thoughts? Figured. However, it's actually a common disease called senioritis. Its symptoms and effects? Well, see for yourself. Want some help? Good and Clean Student. It's an easy and accessible wipe that helps seniors with their disease by simply wiping away their procrastination and laziness. Just watch! <laughs> <laughs>